Mailbag coming your way on Philadelphia Eagles now. I'm your host, Chase Senior. Hope all of you out there have had a great week and a great weekend with a huge game coming up as divisional play gets underway between the Philadelphia Eagles and the Washington Commanders as the Birds take on Carson Wentz. Very interesting note for Wentz. He has played every single team in the NFL except for Philadelphia. So that streak will end, obviously, at FedEx Field on Sunday. And I can already imagine going to be a lot of midnight green in the stands, as there always are, because Dan Snyder is a fraudulent owner. So with that, join us for a watch party on Sunday. It's going to be an absolute blast. We'll go live 15 to 30 minutes before kickoff for a pregame show. Then during the watch party, we'll be smashing beers once again. We'll be doing some really fun stuff, maybe even pieing producer Trizzy Trace. If we get to a certain number in Super Chats, doing some play-by-play. -play. So make sure you subscribe and join us so that we can all party together on Sunday Fun Day. We kick off this mailbag with this one coming in from the G, Albert G. Are the Eagles the most dangerous team in the NFC? I think they're one of the most dangerous teams in the NFC. And look, for Jalen Hurts, he's taken those strides as a passer. He's looked really good. He's been a bona fide MVP candidate throughout the first two weeks of the NFL season, and he's the highest graded passer in the NFL. But defenses are going to adjust at some point to how he throws, the reads that he makes against the Vikings. He went to the left a lot. We know that when he gets pressured, he likes to roll to the right. So teams are going to look at some of those spot charts to see where he throws the football, how the Eagles distribute the offensive play calling. They're going to adjust. So I want to see moving forward how the Eagles counter adjust because that's what this league is all about. But I love Philadelphia and I'm excited about this team because of how deep they are really all across the board and the premium talent that they have. As I've always said, for Jalen Hurts, if he takes that next step as a passer, the Eagles can win the NFC. Donnie is next up. Speaking of Jalen Hurts, he's making a statement here. And you can get in your questions. You can get in your statements as well because we open up the floor for the best fans in the world. Hurts is a franchise quarterback. Look, I understand that when you watch him, it doesn't always look organic. It doesn't always look smooth. He is not going to live and hang out in the pocket like a Tom Brady or an Aaron Rodgers, or a Peyton Manning. But nowadays in the NFL, you can win in a variety of ways. And credit to this coaching staff, they have put Hurts in a position to succeed because they lean into what he does well. And that's why I'm a big believer in this kid, especially with the work that he puts in every single year to get better. THT guy has the whole team improved, including Sirianni's coaching. This is a credit to Howie Roseman. After that Bucks loss, the Eagles were a flawed team. They didn't, didn't beat a team with the playoff record last year, and they certainly had some holes in a couple of areas, right? But they needed depth at wide receiver and another cohort for Devontae Smith. They got that in A.J. Brown. They needed to make a move at safety. They did that with C.J. Gardner-Johnson. And credit to Marcus Epps. I think he's been one of the most slept-on players in this league. They finally invested in linebacker. James Bradbury as the number two corner is as good as it gets, opposite of Darius Slay, who honestly looked like one of, if not the best cornerbacks against Justin Jefferson on Monday night against Minnesota. The offensive line is really good. Dallas Goddard is fantastic. Nick Sirianni, credit to him for making midseason adjustments last year. They clearly wanted to pass it, and they went away from that approach because they realized that they were better as a run team. And he also gave up play calling. That's not easy to do. He gave those duties to Shane Steichen who is probably going to get snatched up as a head coaching candidate at some point soon, if not as early as this upcoming offseason. So the whole team for me has really improved. Spirit Hunter TV, he's a real one here on Eagles now, especially with all the super chats that he sends in. If Hurts plays like he did the last two weeks, will he be a legitimate MVP candidate? Or will he be able to beat out Josh Allen, Tom Brady, Aaron Rodgers, and those types of players in the NFL? So when I look at MVP candidates, I really think this is what – and how you have to think about an MVP candidate. What do they add to the offense? And if you were to take that individual player away from that team, what would the team look like and how would they fare? This team really is built around the identity of Jalen Hurts. So if you took him off of it, yes, Gardner Minshew would be able to have success because I think he's one of the best backup quarterbacks in the NFL, right up there with Jimmy G, who's obviously the starter for the San Francisco 49ers now. But Hertz's impact is profound, 
And his ability as a leader can't be understated. And the fingerprints that he puts on every game with running it like he did against the Vikings, two rushing touchdowns, throwing it with that long ball to Quez Watkins like he did in week one, picking up 10 third down conversions with his arm and with his legs, that's really special stuff. So if the Eagles had the best record in the NFC, then I do think that Jalen Hurts, if he plays like he's played over the last two weeks, he can beat out those aforementioned players because he will be the new hype of the league my g iron mizzle what it do you see the fresh ink there did you see the 44 game comparison with aj brown and megatron thoughts if you did yeah aj brown's numbers were better and he's such a physically gifted wide receiver and that's why i've said aj brown is the best and most gifted wide receiver this franchise has seen since terrell owens and i remember when i was at to's first game at the link against the New York Giants. Oddly enough, Kurt Warner was the starting quarterback. That was the year that they drafted Eli Manning. And the hype around the team was so legit at that point because they finally realized, the fans did, that Donovan McNabb finally had a legitimate number one weapon. And you kind of sense that same excitement with A.J. Brown. And when you watch T.O., he moved differently. He was a different type of physical specimen. You could see that he was one of one and completely unique. The same can be said for Megatron, but the same can also be said for A.J. Brown. The size, the physicality, the strength, but the burst and the explosiveness. I mean, the play that he made against the Vikings, go back and watch it, where he's running downfield, he stops on a dime, literally in an instant, and then darts left and picks up 10, 15 more yards. That's just special stuff. I'm not disrespecting Deshaun Jackson, but he was a vertical threat. I love what Jeremy Macklin brought this football team, but they weren't the T.O. caliber, and they weren't as gifted as A.J. Brown. That's why I'm so pumped up about Always Open. Today's show presented by our sportsbook partner, BetUS. And now that the football season is here, I kind of got that degenerate vibe in my veins right now because I love betting on the game of football. If you are with me on that, hey, make sure you get hooked up with our sportsbook partner, BetUS, all year offering a 125% deposit bonus. For everybody who signed up to get that free jersey deal, shout out to y'all. Jersey's coming your way. Chatsports.com slash EaglesBet. Promo code Eagles125. Let's say you put in $100. With that deposit bonus right here, that's free money, an additional $125 back. And if you want to bet on Eagles Commanders on Sunday, the Birds are seven-point favorites on the road, over-under set at 47. The link and the promo code, get it hooked up, get yourself hooked up, start betting on some of these football games. Lou G next up. Hey, clap it up for Lou G. Give us some clapping emojis in the comment section. We appreciate that $10 super chat, Lou G is a G, didn't even say anything, still sent us in a super. Cheers to you. Trees, hopefully I pronounced that right. Trees Kush. I kind of see what you're doing with that nickname. If I got it right, let me know. Trees Kush, you see? Any worries about injuries on the FedEx field? I heard it was pretty bad. Injuries happen on it frequently, a la MetLife. Now, that's a grass surface. MetLife is turf. I'm bold about my takes with turf. I think it should be banned. I don't think any team should have a turf field. I think that teams with a dome, it's kind of phony. Football was made to be played outside, outside of college, because the resources can't really be paid or devoted to keeping that field in tip-top condition. So having a dome in college is understandable. But in the NFL, play these games outside, ban turf. And if you do want to have a dome, do it like the Arizona Cardinals, where they roll in that new grass surface because injuries happen a lot on some of these turf fields, ACLs, Achilles, and all that because it's synthetic. As for the FedEx field surface, yeah, it's bad, but hopefully this early in the season, it's okay. Again, Dan Snyder, fraud. Tragic, do you think that the lack of competition on the schedule will affect us in the playoffs? Only threat I see is the Packers from now on. Look, you know, I don't know about that. I mean, I think the Minnesota Vikings are an 11-12 win team, and the Eagles thumped them. I think the Detroit Lions are going to be better than a lot of people had anticipated. That's one of my sneaky teams in the NFL this year. They won three games last year, but they were 1-7, I believe, in games last year decided by one score or less. So eight points and inside of that. And then the New Orleans Saints are going to be good. The Green Bay Packers are going to be good. Like, there are good and legitimate teams on this schedule at the very best, though, you play these bad opponents and you lock down that number one seed, going to be tough to come into Philadelphia and win in January. Who you got with this game on Sunday? 
I told you about the betting odds a little bit earlier, but who are you riding with? I'm going with the Birds. I think they win by six. That seven-point line, it's a little bit fat given divisional play. PHI for the Eagles, WAS for the Washington Commanders. Let us know right now.